What's up guys, my name is Kevin. I'm the student pastor here at First Redeemer. Uh, I pastor our sixth through 12th grade students. So that means that uh, for many of you, I get to be uh, your pastor uh, here this fall. I'm so excited to meet uh, a lot of you guys. I know a lot of you will be joining us uh, to some degree. I'm not sure what that will look like, uh, but this fall, and I love the fall every season because we get a new group uh, just like you guys. And I'm so excited to actually see your faces uh, here in the next couple months. Uh, I'm excited to be with you every day for the next five days of VBS. Uh, every day for about 10 minutes, just 10 minutes, we're gonna look into God's Word. And I believe that God is gonna speak into your life. You get that? God of the universe is going to spend time speaking into your life. Here's our verse that we're going to um, kind of walk through over the next week. It's Philippians 1.6. I am sure of this that he who started a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Our prayer this week is that he who began a good work, that Jesus would begin a good work in you. You hear that? Like this is what Jesus wants to do. Jesus is not coming to you to, I want you to go out and do this and go out and do that and do all these rules. Like there's, that I mean, comes later, but Jesus has come first and foremost to do a work in you. Jesus is not just some religious figure that stands outside of you and do this and do that and do this. Jesus has come to work in you, not call you to work up to uh, expectations and rules, but to, He's come to work in you and transform you and give you a new heart. And that's what I believe Jesus will be up to over the course of these five days. Jesus will be here with us with you right where you are, working in you and transforming you and doing the work that He intends for you. I know that um, hearing that we need work done inside of us or we need to be fixed it can be offensive. Uh, we live in a culture you guys uh, watch and see on TV. Love yourself, be okay with yourself, be confident in yourself. And to hear that I need work done inside of me can seem offensive. So why would we want Jesus to even work in us? It's because we're all broken in such a way that only Jesus can fix. We all wanna look better. We all wanna be more popular. Like, like we think that if we can pursue these things then our hearts will be satisfied, but that ache still exists, doesn't it? We struggle with worry. We struggle with what people think about us. We struggle with how we're doing academically. We feel like we have to um, work so hard for people's approval, but yet that ache still exists, doesn't it? And Jesus this week, guys, is coming to do a work in you that your heart really longs for. And so will you allow him? Will you have Jesus reach into the depths of your heart and work where you long for him to work? I pray that you allow him to and that Jesus comes where you are and does a work. Today we're in Matthew chapter nine. So if you have your Bible, go ahead and turn there. Um, Matthew, as you're turning there, is basically a story about Jesus. Um, a gospel is basically a biography of who Jesus is and what He came to do. Um, it's not a biography in the sense that uh, like this is where He was born and this is what He did when He was 12 and 13 and 14, like a play-by-play -play of everything that He did. This is an account or a story of good news of why Jesus came and the kind of work that He came to do in people's lives like yours and mine. And so Matthew's wanting you to see who Jesus is and what He came to do to work in you and me. And so we're in Matthew chapter nine, and this is where Jesus is, He's working, He's moving. And we can learn something about His work in us as He works in this gospel. So Matthew chapter nine, starting in verse nine. As Jesus went on from there, He saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax booth and said to him, follow, me. And Matthew, he got up and he followed him. While Jesus was reclining at the table in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came to eat with Jesus and his disciples. When the, when the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? Now, when he heard this, he said, it is not those who are well who need a doctor, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice, for I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. 
This is a powerful story. And why this is a powerful story is because of who Matthew is. Matthew is what's called a tax collector. Matthew is Jewish, but he's being paid by the country or the, or the people of Rome to take taxes from people. Now that would be seem like a good thing. Like, I mean, we all don't love, I know you guys don't know much about taxes, but basically you have to contribute to the government so the government can continue to govern the society. But tax collectors were particularly uh, not liked in this culture because they didn't just take taxes, they actually took extra beyond the taxes so that they can put some more money in their pocket. Like they did what they were supposed to do to some extent, but they went beyond what they were supposed to do, took extra for gain. And everyone knew tax collectors to be greedy and selfish and thieves. No one in this culture would have liked Matthew. You and I would have not liked Matthew. And so this is what's happening. People see Matthew, they see his character, they see his works, and they, they, um, they push him away. They, they, um, they judge him, they stand at a distance, they retract from him. They don't wanna come near Matthew because he hasn't earned their approval. He's actually um, earned their judgment and their distance. But then Jesus comes on the scene and Jesus doesn't treat Matthew according to what he deserves. In fact, Jesus draws near to him. See, Matthew experiences what you and I experience today. People treat us according to what we deserve. We have to perform for approval. We have to look good enough. We have to be funny enough. We have to be entertaining enough. We have to get the good grades. We have to do all these things for people to say, hey, you wanna hang out sometime? Or hey, let's go do this together. Like to, to have the feeling of belonging, we have to perform and live up to the expectations of those around us, don't we? But Jesus is not the same as those Jesus knows the real us, our flaws, our mistakes, sees everything about our heart. And yet, guys, listen, Jesus doesn't, like he knows, he's the only one who knows everything about you. And Jesus doesn't push you away, he draws near. Like it's not just like Jesus is nice to Matthew. Jesus comes to Matthew and he says, follow me. And Jesus gets criticized, doesn't he? The Pharisees come around, they say, like Jesus, bro, like what you doing? Like, why are you around? This dude doesn't deserve to be welcomed and to have, like, have dinner with him. Like, why would you do that? See, Pharisees were people that were really religious. They were like the elites. They knew all the Bible answers. They were known as leaders in their time, but they had this mindset that they had earned their way into status among people, that they deserved to sit at the head of the table, that they deserved the greatest rewards in society because they had worked their way up to it. Why are you, Jesus, treating this man like he doesn't deserve? He doesn't deserve for you to be near him. Why would you treat him that way? And Jesus says, go and learn this. I desire mercy rather than sacrifice. What is Jesus saying? He's saying, I desire to give mercy despite what people deserve. I've come to love you despite what you have to offer. See, Pharisees thought the more sacrifices they gave, gave more things that they did to earn, that they would get things from God. But Jesus says, no, I've come to give what people don't deserve. I've come to love. And so listen to this today, student. Jesus knows you fully and loves you fully. Jesus is the only one that can say that. Like Jesus knows the depths of your heart and he loves you the same. And so the work that Jesus wants to do in you first and foremost is not to like, hey, do this. Hey, don't do this. Like all these rules and those, those come later. But Jesus first and foremost wants you not to do something, but to know something. He loves you. He does. And he wants to draw near to you this week. Will you let him? Let me pray for us and I hope that you have a good rest of the day and we'll join us again tomorrow as we continue to look at Jesus' work in us. Let's pray. God, thank you so much that you are a loving God, that you haven't imposed upon us religion where we have to work our way into your favor. God, that you have come to us despite what we deserve. And God, I pray that that love would come and 
have its place in our hearts, not just today, not just this week at VBS, but for the rest of our days, that we would know that in Christ, because of what Jesus has done, we are a people deeply loved and deeply known. May this compel us to follow you like Matthew did. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great rest of the day. We'll see you guys right here tomorrow.